Hello everybody, welcome to Hogwarts Library. My name is Emily and I'm so glad to have you here again tonight. I know, really weird. We usually do this kind of stuff during the day, huh? Um, that's because during the day I have really good lighting in here because I've got huge window there, huge window over there, moderate window over there. But during the night, the lighting sucks eggs. So I do have a giant square light thing over there. And um, I don't actually know if it's making things look any better, to be honest with you. I feel like it's not. Uh, but we're just gonna have to deal with it because I feel like filming right now. Also, you don't have to tell me that I don't look good. Uh, first, because it's rude. And second, because I already know. I'm in my jammies. It is middle of the night for me. Not wearing any makeup. My hair is wet because I just got out of the shower. I just pulled all the nails, all like the fake nails off my fingers. It, you know, this isn't my best moment and it's not always going to be, unfortunately. You can't always have an absolute supermodel telling you about, about, you know, the Christian fiction scene. Today, we're actually talking about Christian nonfiction, the most popular Christian nonfiction that exists, the Holy Bible. <gasps> So, recently I've been having trouble reading uh, any fiction books because I haven't wanted to. All I've wanted to read is the Bible. And I don't say that to be like, oh, look at me. I'm, I'm so, I'm so holy. I'm so, I'm so smart and, and all I care about. No, that's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it because I want to show you guys what has been really making me excited about reading my Bible. I'm already noticing, I had to flip my hair because it was, I can only imagine what it looks like right now. I can't see myself, but I, I can only imagine. I'm already noticing a marked improvement in my day-to-day -day life. I pray more, I'm more focused on the right things and less focused on the things around me just from because I'm reading my Bible every day because I'm, I'm devoting time to it. Um, so I'm going to show you, this is going to be a really short video. Uh, I just want to show you the Bible coding technique that I've picked up recently. Um, and Bible coding is something I used to really enjoy. Uh, and then I just stopped doing it and I really, I tried to get back into it, but I couldn't. So, um, but very recently, I've been able to pick it up very easily, and I've been really, really enjoying it. So if you don't know what Bible coding is, Bible coding is where you choose colored, different colors of washi tape, highlighters, pens, um, these little tabs. Um, you choose colored things like this, and then you correspond each of the colors of the highlighters, pens, um, tabs, washi tape, whatever it is that you've chosen, um, you correspond each color with a theme. Um, and whenever you come across that theme in your Bible, you place whatever it is uh, there so that you can find it and so that you can identify these themes. And it's really helping me get a lot more out of my reading. So I'm going to share with you my themes. I keep this little key um, just inside the front of my Bible here so that I can always pull it out uh, whenever it's time to read just so that I can reference back to it. I only have six different categories. I recommend sticking between five and ten because I used to have probably, whenever I first started doing it, I used to have close to like 20. And the more I added, the more overwhelmed I got whenever I was trying to read my Bible because if you have a whole bunch, if you have a tape for every theme that you come across, or if you have a highlighter color or, you know, whatever it is, it's just going to be really systematic and overwhelming. You're always going to be highlighting. You're always going to be underlining. And it's not even something that you're going to need. You know, it's, it's, you're just doing it just to do it. So I found a list of, you know, Bible coding ideas. And this one really um, struck me really well. Uh, I thought that each one of these things would be a good thing for me to keep track of in my Bible while I'm reading. Um, so I'm going to read them to you. And if I have any examples um, already tabbed, because I'm only through Genesis with this new system so far. 
So if I have any of these already tabbed, I will show you the examples that I have. So the first one is God's attributes or who God is and when God speaks and that I've chosen to do in red. So what I do is I, if I find a verse as I'm reading that highlights an attribute of God, I will either highlight it or underline it in red and then I will put one of these tabs there so that I can easily find, first I go to the tab and then I go to the red highlighter underline. Um, makes it really, really easy to find whenever I'm looking for it. Um, So here we have, I opened to Genesis 4, 24 is the highlight here. It says, he drove out the man and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim of flaming and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So... When I read that verse, I'm, I think that the attribute of God that's being shown here and displayed here is justice. Um, he is entirely just. There has to be a punishment. And if you go back just a few verses in verse 21, it says, The Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them, which I think shows God's love and his mercy. So first, he made for him and his wife garments of skins and he clothed them but they still there still had to be repercussions for what they did and so he drove them out of the garden so i have both of those highlighted and underlined in red as different attributes of god but then also in genesis 39:23 it's talking about Joseph and it says, and whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. So this shows an attribute of God where he is very giving to his children. Um, the Lord loved Joseph. It says the Lord was with him and he heaped blessings upon Joseph. Whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. So those were just a few things that I highlighted for red, which is the attributes of God. Um, Moving on, in green, I have prophecies of Christ, which is prophecies and gospel symbolism. So this is, a, you'll see a lot of this in the Old Testament, but there's also some in the New Testament where they quote Old Testament scriptures and show how Jesus fulfilled those things. Um, but I think I do have one here in Genesis. Yes, in Genesis 3.15... It says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Um, so I have that underlined in green. That's an example of a prophecy of Christ um, mentioned in the Old Testament, which as we know, there is a lot of them. So I'm hopeful that I'll have a lot more green tabs in the future. So my third one is in orange. It is man's sinfulness and it is verses that display evil, disobedience, man's depravity, and our need for a savior. As you can imagine, I have used so many of the orange tabs. On this same page, um, Genesis 3 verse six she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate um, of course that was the first instance where i have um disobedience and sin highlighted um, the next instance is literally the next page uh chapter four genesis chapter four verse eight um, Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Um, and then I skipped down a little bit where the Lord says, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, um, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. 
you shall be a fugitive and a wanderer of the earth. So this displays the evil, the sinfulness of, of man and through what Cain did. Um, next is yellow and this is good faith. It's when man obeys and trusts in God. Um, I also have it, I also do whenever a, Joseph very often did this where he said, oh, it wasn't me who did all these things, it was God. So I also highlight, highlighted those things um, in yellow. So this one, it's uh, chapter five, verse 24, Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Um, on the next page, we have Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him in chapter six. In chapter seven, um, it says, then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. And then in chapter, in verse five, it said, chapter seven, verse five, it says, Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. So I think highlighting good faith is a really, really good way of giving us examples of what we should do. It also encourages us when we're in really difficult situations of like, okay, this is what I should be doing. You know, um, we see like people who, who their lives are documented in, in the word of God and they are faced with situations that we don't face every day. These people were faced with, with ridicule like we have never seen. And they still, it says, Noah did all that God commanded him to do. Not a little bit, not some of it, not, oh, I'll, I'll you know, hey guys, um, there's a flood. No, you're not interested. Yeah, that's cool. Like, no, Noah did all that God commanded him. Um, so it's, it's really encouraging for us to see stuff like that. Okay, the next one is purple, which is prayer, which is good examples of speaking to God. I don't have any purple yet. Um, but a good example of this would, of course, be our Lord's Prayer. Um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, at my last church, we used to pray that every single, every single service. I really loved that. Um, but that would be a good example of, of prayers because sometimes we really, really struggle with praying. Praying can be really difficult. Um, it can feel a little awkward if you're not used to doing it. But it's really good for us to see good examples of prayer in the scriptures um, because they can, they can not only encourage us, but they can help us find the words that we're looking for. My last one is in blue and it is commands, which includes God's law and his design for man. And... I think that this is a super important one, especially right now for us to be keeping track of. God's design for man. How did God make us? Why did he make us? What was our purpose? And what did he design us for? So if we go back to the first, the first blue tab that I have put here, it's also good for us to keep track of God's commands and what he commands of us. Um, which will, of course, eventually lead you into the, the three different types of laws, the, the moral, civil, and ceremonial laws. You can talk to your pastor about that. But my first highlight that I have for um, God's law and his design for man is, of course, Genesis 26, or Genesis 1:26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So it's, it's when we, we live in a time where so many people are having these awful, 
very devastating identity crises. There, you know, we live in a time with huge, uh, a, a disproportionate suicide rate. Everything is, <laughs> people really don't understand who they are, who they belong to, what they were made for. And it is so vital, especially right now, for us to have those answers. We have to know who we are, who we were created for, what we were created for who we belong to, and it's God. We were created to worship God. We were created to dwell with him. He made us male and female. He created us. And he tells us the differences between the two. He tells us that both are made in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. It says when he is creating woman, it says, then the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him, which also is corresponding to him. So one that is designed specifically for him. One who is where man might fall short, woman is strong. And where woman falls short, man is strong. He made these two, he made woman to complement man. And Adam says, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And I have this underlined as well. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So stuff like this is, it's so, it's just really important for us to be keeping track of this kind of stuff, especially in the time that we're alive right now, because everything is so insane. But if you have other, if you have other things that you want to add to this, things that are important for you, things that you need more examples of, and things that you find yourself looking for a lot, I, I recommend that you add more to this list. Um... I do recommend all of these. I, I think these are all really good things for us to be keeping track of um, as we read through the scriptures. And it's been so fun and interesting because you're as, as you're reading, you're digging deeper into it. Like, okay, what does this reveal to me about God? That would be read God's attributes. Um, you're seeing all of man's sinfulness throughout throughout time. Um, you're seeing the acts of, of goodness. You're seeing when people obey. You're seeing all these different prayers and the commands of God. And it's really incredible um, to have this kind of stuff at, at your fingertips, ready whenever you're going to need them. So that was pretty much all I had to talk to you guys about today. I really want to encourage you um, to pick up some stuff like this. You know, you can get these tabs at the dollar store for $1.25. Um, you don't need anything fancy to do this kind of stuff. You really don't. You can get colored pens, colored pencils, highlighters, whatever it is you want to use. Um, and this, I feel like this will really, really help you dig deeper into the scriptures as you're reading. So anyway, um, I really hope this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, I hope you've, you've enjoyed listening to me rambling on about about this um and let me know if you want to hear some more about you know just my little bible thoughts and stuff like that um so i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you have a wonderful night and even better tomorrow we will see you next week